Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. This is choking me up, obviously. On um, iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, we won a lot of beer at the end of last year, right? By now, you've probably spent the summer partying over the victory by the underdog Seattle Seahawks in the Super Bowl, right? But understand, I've actually called other Super Bowls here online, right? If you want to look at some of the picks I've made in the past with regard to American football, just type in DeWire and Football and those plays will come up. Now this time of year I like to spend my time actually looking at football futures simply because I believe the payouts are much bigger than in picking day-to-day -day games. Right? I believe some teams are underrated early and if you hop on the bandwagon early then you'll have an opportunity later in the year once the teams make the playoffs to actually hedge out of the play and take advantage of some of the leverage, right, by betting on the other side. So last year, one of the teams I talked about that got you a huge rate of return during the season were the Kansas City Chiefs, right? You were able to cash out that very first playoff game because you got huge odds on the Chiefs at the start of the year. Right. Likewise, the Carolina Panthers, the two seed last year in the NFC, understand by the time you got to that playoff game, right? Panthers had made the playoffs, you were able to cash out. This year, I think you have some compelling plays on the board. I simply don't see how the New England Patriots don't make the playoffs. Right? I don't see how the New England Patriots don't dominate their division, the AFC East. Right? I was in a fantasy pool where, incredibly, Tom Brady was unprotected. Right? There seems to be some school of thought out there that Tom Brady, who did improve last year as the year went along, as he figured out his untested receivers, right? Tompkins, Dobson, etc. Right? There seems to be some school of thought that Tom Brady is in decline. Right? Let me just say, the Patriots haven't looked this good for several years. Right? Tom Brady is still an elite quarterback in this league. He's slowing down a little bit, but he's slowing down like Floyd Mayweather is slowing down. Right? It's gradual. He's still elite. Also, the Patriots have guys like Daryl Rivas now in their secondary. Folks, that's outrageous. Right? You're telling me this team has upgraded its secondary? And, of course, you have guys like Vince Wolfert. Back. He's healthy. Rob Gronkowski. Back. He's healthy. Right? That team is dangerous. I believe you're making a big mistake if you don't put some futures action on them to win the Super Bowl right here. They don't have to win the Super Bowl for you to collect. Hypothetically, if you're getting 8-1 to one on the Patriots to win the Super Bowl, understand, if the Patriots make the playoffs, you're cooking with gas because you have 8-1 to one leverage. So you could even bet on the team the Patriots are playing against in that first playoff game and get back your initial investment. Right? Let me go further. If the Patriots finish in the top two, for their conference, understand they get a buy, right? So you're already into the second round of the playoffs. So when you bet against the Patriots to try to hedge out the play, you're able to do so on a greater level, right? I think the Patriots are a live team for futures betting purposes. I believe the defending champion Seattle Seahawks are a live team in the NFC for NFL future betting purposes. Now keep in mind, this is the NFL. 
We've seen superstars. Randall Cunningham get knocked out of a season early. Tom Brady get knocked out of a season early. Injuries happen. Gronkowski knocked out last year. Wolfer, who I mentioned earlier, knocked out during the season last year. Right? Okay, fine. That happens. But if Russell Wilson stays healthy, and if that secondary stays healthy for the Seahawks, I'm expecting the Seahawks to do big things. I haven't seen a team this promising in terms of the chances of having a dynasty since the early 1990 Dallas Cowboys. Right? This team's young. This team's good. Their coach, Pete Carroll, presided over a dynasty in college. He knows how to keep the confidence going. Right, looking at this team in the preseason, I didn't get the feeling that they were complacent in any way. And given the fact that I firmly believe that the San Francisco 49ers, their chief rivals in the division, are hopelessly overrated. Right, hopelessly overrated. I mean, I'm expecting the 49ers to have a hard time opening day against the Cowboys, folks. And I don't consider the Cowboys to be playoff level. I think Seattle is a team where you have got to take the odds. Now, let me point out, they look low. Seattle to win the Super Bowl right now, something like 5-1 to one or 6-1, to one, depending on the shop where you frequent, right? But understand, if I were to offer you the Dallas Cowboys in the early 90s at these odds, if I were to offer you the steel curtain in the 1970s at these odds, you would think it was Christmas. Right? Seattle has a powerful home field advantage. They're likely to win at least six games at home. If they can get by Green Bay week one, that number probably goes up to seven. Right? Think about it. Right? My point to you is with that home field and with the experience in winning a Super Bowl that this team didn't have at this time last year, you need to strongly consider a futures play on the Seahawks. Here again, if they end up in the top two in the NFC, you're already in the second round of the playoffs. Understand, Russell Wilson has played two seasons in the NFL. Both seasons, his quarterback rating has been over 100. Understand, Percy Harvin was on the roster last year. He wasn't on the field much because he was hurt. He's going to be on the field this year. Right? So, Seattle definitely warrants your attention. Also, another team, I think, that warrants your attention that seems to be flying under the radar are the New Orleans Saints. Look at their home field advantage. Think about it. Their defense is so improved that Champ Bailey couldn't make the team. Right? Sean Payton was suspended two years ago. Last year, he came back. There was a break in continuity. He had to get his feet wet. Well, this is the year after that. The continuity is solidified. Right? Given that, in the division, Cam Newton barely knows the name of his wide receivers this year. There's been that much turnover in Carolina. Right? By the way, I think Carolina is also a possible futures play. Right? Given the long odds. Right? The odds are longer for Carolina than they are for New Orleans. But just understand, you're being compensated for the risk there. But given that Carolina has taken a bit of a step back, right? Everyone's hoping for big things from Kelvin Benjamin. Really? A rookie wide receiver? Right? Given that Carolina's taken a bit of a step back, and given that New Orleans really has no competition in their division, right? No one's going to tell me that Atlanta, a team with a terrible record last year, a team with a terrible defense last year, it's going to be competitive with the New Orleans Saints in the long term. And no one's going to tell me that a new coach, 
Lovey Smith, right, new coach with this team, with a new quarterback, is actually going to compete with Drew Brees and Sean Payton. It's just not going to happen for Tampa this year. So I think the Saints are a futures play you need to keep your eye on. Let me go one step further. Speaking of getting your feet wet, last year a college coach came into the NFL with a new offense and got his team not only into the playoffs, but a home game in the playoffs. This year, Chip Kelly actually has experience he didn't have last year. The team has continuity he didn't have last year. Right? Last year, Michael Vick was the starter. This year, and let's be real here, you have a better quarterback starting for the Philadelphia Eagles. Let me go one step further. Mark Sanchez was a dominant high school quarterback. He was part of the Roman Empire at USC. Now let's face it. Just look at the drop-off in offensive numbers for people like San Antonio Holmes when they played with Rex Ryan's New York Jets. Now Sanchez is in the kind of pinpoint quick strike passing offense in which he excels. Right? Understand too, Mark Sanchez made it to two AFC championship games with the Jets. He's Nick Foles' backup. Let's just say the Eagles are taken care of at quarterback this year. Also, even without Deshaun Jackson, I think the Eagle wide receivers are loaded. Because even with Deshaun Jackson, I thought the best wide receiver on the Eagles was Jeremy Macklin. Now, he was out last year. He's back now. Right? Also, whatever Riley Cooper's problems off the field, can we agree on the field he's a burner? You add in to LaShawn McCoy, who right now, with all due respect, Adrian Peterson, is the best back in the National Football League. You add in Darren Sproles, and folks, you're cooking with gas, especially since my team, the New York Giants, look offensively challenged this preseason, and let's face it, the Dallas Cowboys don't have a defense, right? When Tony Romo and company leave the field, I'm wondering if anyone will get on the field, right? And I'm sorry, new coaches with suspect quarterbacks don't get it done in my opinion and Jay Gruden's a new coach and I consider RG3 to be a suspect quarterback I'm not expecting anything from the Washington Redskins this year right look I know I sound hard here I know I sound like a hater you know what I hate is losing money right somebody's got to talk straight here Right? I'm not a believer in the Redskins. I'm not a believer in the Dallas Cowboys. The Giants, I'm marginally a believer because, understand, they started last year 0-6. They finished last year 7-9. and They have one of the best coaches in the league. I just don't believe they have the personnel that the Eagles have on offense. Right? I'll agree, Eagle defense is going to make a lot of their games shootouts. Right? Well, let's just say in terms of futures, those are the teams I like. I question new coaches in general. I believe Chip Kelly was the outlier last year. So I'm questioning what's happening in Detroit. Right? Jim Caldwell is new. I'd say too new. Right? Detroit, quite frankly, doesn't have the culture of winning that they have in other places. Another problem Detroit has, simply put, is their division. It's going to be rough sledding. Right? I like Chicago. I like Green Bay. But let's face it. Jay Cutler wasn't even statistically the best quarterback on the Bears last year. 
I have some questions about him in terms of whether he's ready to take the next step and make that team a Super Bowl contender. Right? So, just understand that right now, September the 3rd, 2014, the teams I like in terms of futures, I like Belichick and I like Tom Brady, I like the New England Patriots. I don't see a play on the board as strong as the Patriots. Right? They have a much bigger head start on their division than any team in the AFC West. Right? The problem with Peyton Manning is he looks over his shoulder and he sees Phillip Rivers and the San Diego Chargers in the division. And the problem the two of them have is they look over their shoulder. KC was a playoff team last year. I'm sorry I'm not a big believer in Jake Locker. Even though I'm a big believer in Ken Wisenhunt, he's new. You know what I feel about new coaches, right? I believe the jury's still out on the Indianapolis Colt defense, right? Andy Dalton in the playoffs mix like oil and water, don't they? Right? I'd like to see Cincinnati get it together a little bit. I am a big fan of Hugh Jackson, but... You know, all I can say is things haven't worked out for Cincinnati. Ray Rice, of course, the uh, spousal abuser that he is, or the girlfriend abuser that he is, is going to miss the first two games on a team, the Ravens, that didn't make the playoffs last year. Right? I like to believe in the Steelers. The problem is, of course, they didn't make the playoffs last year. I have the utmost respect for Mike Tomlin. I have huge respect for Ben Roethlisberger, a multiple Super Bowl winner. Keep in mind, Ben got to a third, but lost to Aaron Rodgers. Right? The Steelers are a team to watch. But again, there are concerns. They've lost some players. Right? So... From a futures perspective, who I'm hot and heavy on right now are the New England Patriots in the AFC, the defending champion Seattle Seahawks, and the Philadelphia Eagles, as well as the New Orleans Saints. Those four teams right now are garnering my eye on the futures market, right, with a long shot nod to the Carolina Panthers. I think Cam Newton is better than advertised. The problem I have with Cam is I don't like the words cracked rib in the same sentence with quarterback this early in the season. That sounds like that could be a problem, especially when the team relies so much on him. Now let's talk about week one of the NFL season. Now just understand that I think it's very dangerous to fool around with point spreads this early in the season. Right? Um, you just don't know what you have, especially with rookies and free agents. Do we really know what Ware is going to do with the Denver Broncos? Is he going to look as great as he looked with Dallas, or is there going to be a drop-off? Right? How is Aqib Talib going to fit in with the Denver Broncos? I don't believe you really know. Sammy Watkins looked great in college. Sammy Watkins seems to always be injured in the pros. Now, I think he's a major talent. But at the same time, I'd like to see him show it at the pro level. So to me, there are too many variables the first couple of weeks to really fool around with point spreads. But I'm going to do that in the New Orleans Saints-Atlanta Falcons game. Right? Let's just say I like the Saints in that matchup, and I understand Matt Ryan is hard to beat in Atlanta. But I just have a hard time believing that a team as bad as the Atlanta Falcons were last year is going to be able to turn around and turn it on so early, so soon thereafter. Right? Understand, Atlanta last year had one of the worst defenses in the entire league. Now, I'll agree. They're familiar with the Saints. The Saints are in their division. 
but put me among those who is a skeptic of the Atlanta Falcons. Understand, Tony Gonzalez is retired. He was a big part of their offense. All right, so I like the Saints laying a point and a half week one of this NFL season. Let's talk about some other games, right? You know, to me, the NFL is hard on rookie quarterbacks. It just is. Now, you're telling me that Derek Carr a week ago didn't even know he was going to be the starter. He was fighting for the starting position. And now week one, he's going to go up against the New York Jet defense on the road? Good luck with that. I like the New York Jets on the money line at minus 235 week one of the season. All right, let's talk about another game. Did either Cleveland Brown quarterback set the world on fire for you this preseason? Didn't Brian Hoyer look a bit shaky? Understand, the guy's coming back from major knee surgery. Right, Johnny Manziel, well, he's a rookie. You know what I think about rookies in the National Football League in their first starts. By the way, Cleveland's playing Dick LeBeau's defense, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Veteran quarterbacks have a problem with the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. What do you think these guys are going to do against this defense, especially since Pittsburgh's coming off of a year in which it didn't make the playoffs and needs to make a statement? Needless to say, I like the Pittsburgh Steelers over the Cleveland Browns on a money line play. I believe the line's a good one. It's a minus 275. I like Pittsburgh in that matchup. So to sum up, I like the Saints over the Falcons, right? Saints laying the points. I like the Jets and the Steelers on money lines, right? Over Oakland and Cleveland, right? In general, I like to bet against rookies starting at quarterback in the National Football League. I just think the games are too different, college football versus pro football. Let me hear your picks. Leave them for us here online. Let me hear your betting strategies. Share them with us so we can all get a leg up on the casino. And when I say your picks, I'm not just talking about the day-to-day -day game action. But if you have a futures prop that you think's an eye-opener, let us know about it. Let me just point out, though, that you don't want to take a team on a futures prop where that team has significant injuries, right? So again, as much as I like the talent level of the Carolina Panthers, Cam Newton with a cracked rib, that's a five-alarm fire in my book, right? Let me hear about yours. Leave your comments for us. Thanks for stopping by. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com.